How does the title relate to the book? The title, like, so a diving, a diving bell is just like, it's basically a compressed tank that can hold people so you can go underwater. And once you're out of the water, you're obviously locked in and he feels as if he's locked in. And then the butterfly relates to him when he finally gets his imagination back and starts becoming creative again. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> what was the author's purpose in writing the book? I said that the author's purpose in writing the book was to get his story out there and let people know about like his struggles with locked in syndrome. And um, yeah, I just felt like he wanted to like, I don't know, write a book about it, write about his struggles. <laughs> yeah, I just feel like, I mean, that's what it is. He's the book just relates on or it just talks about how it was with him in the hospital and how he had to live with his locked in syndrome so yeah um various healthcare professionals were responsible for the author's care do you think it was necessary to have so many specialists involved and how do you think this impacts the cost of his care so i said i do think it's necessary to have so many specialists involved because locked in syndrome is, it's like rare, it's not very common. So the more doctors you have, the more answers and solutions you'll get to like, I don't know, like all the things that was wrong with him and every doctor specializes in different things. So uh, yeah, I feel like it was important to have multiple doctors. Yeah, I agree. Just his entire body was affected. So not one doctor can, not one like specialist can focus on his entire body. There's a specialist for everything. So I feel like it was definitely necessary to have plenty of doctors and specialists in the room. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How do you think this impacts the cost of his health care? It definitely healthcare? it definitely um increases the cost, which is a given. But his medical bill is expensive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um how does the author respond to his condition and how do those um, like family, friends, people like that around him impact his response. Explain your answer. So I said at first he didn't like, cause in the book he didn't really know what was going on. He would, um, he thought he would recover fast because of um, what well, he was overhearing by like the nurses and the doctors and stuff. And then he got really like, um, he got really devastated when he realized that how bad his condition was and what his future held. Cause he didn't think that his future was gonna be good because of his condition. Yeah, just like you said, he expected to recover a lot faster and he didn't, re he didn't really realize the severity of his condition. Mm -hmm. So having so many people around him at the same time, now having to change their life and ha learning how to work with them, I feel like it. So does the book have any impact on you on how you feel about people with disabilities? Um, no. It didn't really, it didn't change my point of view or anything because I understand that people with disabilities, it's already a lot harder for them to live as it is. But like this book just went into more detail about it, but it doesn't really affect me. Like I still, I still view them the same. That might sound really bad, but I mean it in like the most res like respectful way possible. If you respect me, I respect you. You are a human. Just because you have a disability doesn't mean I'm gonna look down upon you or I'm gonna look more highly of you. Um, I will, like, I can work better with you knowing that, like, I will work better with you and working with your disability and work harder to understand your needs or their needs. I said that after reading the book, I really, I don't think it had an impact on me with um, how I view people just because I kind of view everybody as the same. I don't view anybody as more or like they're more than anybody else. And so I feel like if you have a disability, I'm not gonna treat you any different than the way I treat anybody else. Like I'll recognize that you have that disability and I'll like, if like it's something serious and yeah, I'll cater to you. Cause like you obviously can't do everything that I can do, but I'm not gonna like, I don't know, treat you any less than what I am. Cause we're the same, you know, skin and bones. Um, mm, where am I at? The author was able to reflect on the importance of his life due to sudden illness. Um, support the claim that his physical paralysis was a benefit to his consciousness. Oh. I feel like it made him think more about his life and how like, important he actually is, I guess. 
Yeah, I feel like you know, whenever you go through something traumatic like that, it just kind of, you put in like, you put everything, I don't know, you start to think about everything that you've done and everybody that's around you and who's really there for you and stuff like that. It definitely changes you. Yeah. That's for sure. Changes the way you view things, everything like that. Um, assisted suicide is a hot issue. Do you believe somebody in the author's position should have the choice to choose assisted suicide? Yes. If I really feel like anybody has the choice, whether you have a serious illness or not, you have the choice. Like you have the choice to die. Um, you have the choice. You just like you do. You have the choice to die. If you want to die, you want to die. That's your decision. And I feel as if the yes, I do believe that somebody in the author's position has the right to choose assisted suicide. Just his life. It's not over, but it's over. Who wants to live the rest of their life seeing out of their left eye? Really nobody. And if they do, then great, that's their choice. But if they don't, I feel as if they should have the option of assisted suicide. It's a peaceful death. It's not It's not messy. And it's just, it's a lot better to go that way because nobody wants to live their life as a vegetable. Mm -hmm. I feel like the author should have the choice of assisted suicide. I mean, if, like, if I were in his situation, I, like, I'm already, he's, I mean, he's not old. He's, like, in a, I don't know, like, same age as our parents, but I feel, I feel like I would probably choose to just end it, because if there's no chances for me to gain mobility in any other part of my body, there's no point in me carrying on. You know, like, I already lived a life. I had, like, if I had children already, I got to see different places. It's just, like, why not, you know? Like, why not end it now? Like, I don't have any other reason to keep going. And I don't want to live a life in, like, misery just because, like, I can only communicate out of my left eye. Like, that that's, that takes so long just to get one. It took him two minutes just to get one word. Like, that's, that's extremely long. It's ridiculous. So, yeah. How would you respond in the same situation as the author? Um, if I was in the situation of the author, at this age, I would... I mean, this is really, like, not a difficult question to answer because you're never really going to know until you're in that situation. But if I was in the author's situation at 17 years old, I haven't lived my life. I haven't got to do everything I want to do. I haven't been able to marry someone, have children. So answering that question at this age is a lot more difficult. I would definitely, if I wasn't in pain, I would try my best to wait it out. And if there's no signs of getting better or no signs of anything then I wouldn't be able to take it anymore and I don't think my family members would be able to see me like that but if I was the same age as the author and I have lived my life and I have done just about everything I want to do then there's really nothing left for me besides my family but if I'm having an extremely difficult time communicating with my family and it's difficult for them to communicate with me then there's no point and then if I'm in pain, I don't want to be in pain my entire life. I don't want to sit in a bed in pain and not be able to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I was in a situation, like if I was like right now, I was just, I don't know, I had a stroke and I woke up and my whole body was paralyzed. I'd cry, I'd freak out. I'd, I'd cry for days. I'd be in the hospital bed just crying. Cause <laughs> in the hospital right I don't know room. what I would do. Like that's just that's something I don't that's something I never want to go through I never want to see anybody going through because that's just too much like you know I got I got all my my arms my legs I can do everything and for that to all be taken away from me I don't I oh man I feel like my life would be over I don't know what I'd do yeah I mean for the most part it it is yeah you can't yeah. you can't do anything <laughs> can't you can't drive ride ride a roller coaster you can't do anything can only talk out of my left eye <laughs> okay would you recommend this book to others why or why not um the, to me the book it wasn't it wasn't too interesting um if you enjoy reading and you enjoy reading everything then yeah go ahead but the book wasn't as interesting to me as i thought it would be um it was it was interesting to understand how it's like living with locked in syndrome but other than that i didn't really i wasn't interested enough to want to keep reading i just felt as if i was obligated to keep reading so i wouldn't recommend it same i feel like only reason i read the book 
was, you know, I had to. It was an assignment. I don't feel like, yeah. I don't feel like I'd read the book outside of class ever. I feel like, um, I don't know. The book was okay. It wasn't, it wasn't something like extremely interesting that just really catches my eye and just like just draws me into the book. But like some parts were interesting, and then others were just like, like they're just boring. They're like drawn out, really boring, and I just wanted something to happen, but nothing did. So, yeah. All right.